In this lecture, we're going to look at how we can solve the governing equations of motion for dynamics in a step-by-step -step fashion um, over a number of time steps. Okay, first of all, we need to introduce the governing equation. Um, there are more formal methods, but we're just going to, at this point, just state them. So, what we are going to do, first of all, and we're always going to work in a matrix format, so we're working with many degrees of freedom, not just a single degree of freedom, as been introduced before. So, in statics, we solve the equilibrium equation. Stiffness times displacement equals force. We're now going to take that concept slightly further. And just a, a reminder, we're using the square brackets when we have a matrix and the curly brackets when we have a column vector. We're going to take that further. Now we still have our stiffness times displacement, but we're going to add to that inertial effect. So we can have mass times acceleration. Again, from Newton's second law, that has the units of force. We're going to consider, we're not going to touch on this in this topic very heavily but we could always consider damping effects where the damping matrix c is proportional to the velocity and finally if we're talking about a dynamic problem now the force vector itself is no longer just a force applied that's constant although it could be it's a force that can potentially be time varying so we're saying that now the force vector is a is now a function of time. A couple of things to note then. So K is still the stiffness matrix and U is the displacement. Now mass, M is the mass matrix and U double dot. The dot above the letter is denotes that we have a differentiation with respect to time. So we have U du by dt, which we're also writing as u dot. It's a nice shorthand notation, but we can write it down. And we can also then write d2u by dt squared. And we can write that as double dot. So du by dt, the change in displacement with time, is the velocity. And d2u by dt squared is the acceleration. So velocity and acceleration. So following on from the direct stiffness work for static equations, we know how we can assemble the stiffness matrix. And now what we need to look at is how the element mass matrices can be defined. So in one dimension, so, Mass matrix M. And we're just going to consider now the bar. We can do more complicated elements like beams, plates, shells, continuum elements at some other point in the future. But for now, we're just going to consider a bar element that can have displacements, velocities, and accelerations just at the nodes U1 and U2. Also, that could be u dot 2 and u double dot 2. Likewise, u dot 1, u double dot 1. Okay, so following on from there, we will have two displacements or two velocities or two accelerations. And our mass matrix for this case will be for one element only. So I'll use E for the element, equals rho, the mass density, multiplied by the volume. And the volume of the element is going to be the cross-sectional area, A, and then the length of the element, L. So that's the total volume. Multiplied by M gives us the total mass of the element. And then we wish to distribute the mass between the two nodes. Now, there are two ways we can do this. One of them, first one we're going to introduce called something called the consistent mass matrix, where the mass is slightly distributed between the two nodes. And later, we're going to move on to something called the lumped mass matrix. 
Now there's a formal derivation we can show in a later course using finite element shape functions, but for this course, all that we need to know is the mass is distributed between the two nodes as one third at the nearest node and one sixth at the furthest node. So for node one, one third of the mass we consider at, at node one and one sixth of the mass at node two. And in the opposite direction, again, one sixth of the mass at node one and one third of the mass at node two. So, and then just so we can show that would be acting on you the acceleration one, u double dot one, and the second row acts on the acceleration at the second node. Okay, if we add up the two components, one third and one six, so that's two, two six plus one six is three six, so the total mass acting on, for example, node one is one half. And this leads us to another scheme. So first of all, let's just write the name of this one down. This is the consistent mass matrix. But knowing that we're, we essentially want half of the mass at one node, half of the mass half of the mass at the other end of the beam or bar at the other node too. So we've got, this can lead us to something that we're gonna call the lumped mass matrix. So let's call that C for consistent. And now we're gonna rewrite this element mass matrix and lumped. And we write it still with the same row times A times L and still acting on acceleration one and acceleration two, but we're gonna choose, so let's just say half of the mass is at node one, none of the mass considered at node two, and for node two, we do exactly the same, but half of the mass is directly just lumped, hence the name, at the nodes themselves. So this was if we had a mass matrix that was in a 1D element, but obviously as we've seen in the work on direct stiffness, we could have a bar element that is at some general angle alpha to the axes. And so we're gonna end up then with four components of displacement, four components of acceleration, and if necessary, four components of velocity. So we would end up with, and let's call that node one, that one node two, could easily be node six million and node 25, but we'll use one and two, it's easier. So that would be U one X, and let's go, let's call them the accelerations. Let's, and let's U, acceleration at node one in the y direction then we have acceleration at node two in the x direction and the acceleration at node two in the y direction so we have four potential components of acceleration so we then need to set up an element mass matrix that's usable in two dimensions. And we're just gonna state them here. So for the consistent mass scheme, our element mass matrix is equal still the row times the area times the length. And then we're gonna have four components in the mass matrix and it's going to be still the third, one sixth, and one sixth and one third. But now we need zeros for the y direction. So this is all of the components we need in the x direction. So that mass matrix is stopped the same one third, one sixth, one sixth, one third. Okay, and now we're going to do the x. In the Y direction, I'm gonna change color so we can see it a bit clearer. So now we have zero. Nothing happening in the X direction, one third, zero, one sixth, 
we've got 0, 1 sixth, 0, 1 third. And this would be acting then on those four components. So that would be acceleration 1 in the x direction, acceleration 1 in the y direction, and then acceleration 2 in the x direction, and acceleration 2 in the y direction. Okay, one thing that can be quite slightly confusing with this scheme, if you were to add up all of the coefficients in this mass matrix, you would actually have twice the mass of the structure, which can seem a little bit confusing at first. What this is, is we count the couples in the equations in the x direction to decouple from the y direction. So it can seem like we've got twice the mass. However, we have half of the mass or the full mass can act in the x direction and the full mass can also act in the y direction. So we can create inertial forces or inertia in both directions. Okay, so that was the consistent mass. And um, we're gonna follow up now with a lump mass scheme. And in a similar way, we end up with twice the mass of the entire system. And we're also going to lump all the mass directly at the nodes. So we still have row A, L. We're still gonna have four components in here. But because the mass is, is considered to be only at the node, what we have is a half, a half, a half, and a half. Everywhere else is zeros, just on the diagonals. And we'll see later that having the mass just on the diagonals can actually be very useful for computational efficiency.